I'm Edie Lush and I'm here in the Hub Culture Pavilion in Davos. I'm here with Rajiv Day, CEO and founder of Internships. Now I've known you, in fact, sort of through print for quite a long yeah, time as I wrote absolutely. about you for The Spectator a Did while ago. Yeah. Tell me what you're up to. Sure, so I'm here um, as part of the Young Global Leaders Group. So we arrived here at Davos on, on Monday um, and my company, Internships.com, is all about connecting students and graduates to internships and jobs with a strong focus on startups and SMEs. So we work with over 4,000 companies who are looking for bright, dynamic talent, uh, as well as developing talent programs for companies. And with youth unemployment so high on the agenda here at Davos, I've been doing a number of talks and, and workshops looking at how leaders and policymakers can really try and tackle this issue. So tell me about internships. How does it work and can you decrease the amount of time that somebody is out of jobs for a second? Well, absolutely. I think one of the problems that employers face with young people is often they don't have um, the skills or, or they're not necessarily work ready. So what we're trying to say to students is do as many internships, internships, work placements, just make, get, get some experience of the workplace. Mm -hmm. so what we do though is connect you to startups and small businesses you would not normally come across on campus. Mm -hmm. So usually you get exposed to the big banks, the law firms, mm -hmm. the accountancy firms, but there isn't really anything showcasing the 4.8 million small businesses that are out there in the mm -hmm. UK alone. Um, and right now, we're also doing a partnership with Telefonica for their Wira Accelerator mm -hmm. program. And so we'll be showcasing opportunities in Germany, Spain, Ireland, Czech Republic. So there's some fantastic opportunities that are out there mm -hmm. for students and graduates to really get their foot in the, on the career ladder. And often what happens is once you start as what we call an intern, you can make yourself indispensable, mm -hmm. create your own job. But some also then go on to set up their own business. They're so inspired by the being in a startup environment that they want to go do it themselves. I think it's absolutely fascinating. I wonder what you've been hearing about youth un unemployment just from your experience mm -hmm. here at Davos. Well, I think the numbers are, are startling. So there's 75 million unemployed young people around the world. Um, Spain's youth unemployment recent figures have just come out saying that it's, it's close to 60%. And these are, these are startling and, and, and worrying figures, really, because um, we are definitely at risk of a lost generation because mm -hmm. there's a whole generation of young people entering the workforce. They're highly skilled, they're highly qualified, they, I mean, they've studied, but they just do not have the opportunity to kind of have that first uh, entry level opportunity. And I think unless policymakers do tackle this, and this is, this is not an issue just for Europe. I was attending a workshop looking at the, the situation in, in, in the Middle East, and, and there they have slightly different issues because there's a cultural uh, nuance there where if you look at the UAE, um, there's a strong preference to go work in the, in the government sector and to mm -hmm. work with the civil service rather than the private sector or be an entrepreneur. So different regions have different challenges, but generally they're all facing the same challenge of this, uh, this youth unemployment crisis and also underemployment where young people are in jobs but on a temporary basis or just doing some part-time work mm -hmm. and they're not being used to their full capacity. So this is a great worry to policymakers because it's an untapped potential. There's also a drain on resources if they're on benefits but let's, we're, we're looking at how we can change a dialogue to turn that into an asset and really mm -hmm. get them back into work whether that be through work placements, apprenticeships or even helping young people look at entrepreneurship as a viable and rewarding career path and therefore not only taking a job, but making a job. For the countries that you operate in and that you're aware of, where do you think the, the most opportunity is? I think the, the economy that has probably one of the lowest levels of youth unemployment is in Germany. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think and the reason they've got their education system right, because from a very young age, it's, it's, there's the strong culture of doing apprenticeships, and there's a very vocational-based education system. Um, and I think some places like the UK have failed is that we don't have that. And, and whilst the government is trying to encourage apprenticeships, it's just not as, as intertwined mm -hmm. as it is in Germany. And obviously, I think what we're seeing, though, is that the startup hubs are emerging. I'd say London is leading the way around mm -hmm. startup culture and startup hubs and followed by Berlin. Um, and we will see more of these hubs and, and especially in Eastern Europe kind of emerging. Uh, and I think startups can provide a really exciting opportunity for young people because they're not necessarily going to judge you on your grades or your institution, mm -hmm. but they're really looking at your kind of culture, your fit and your attitude to see, are you a self-starter? Would you fit in the startup environment? And they are the ones hiring. So as policymakers, we should be also looking at how can we support the startups and small businesses to grow and as a result, to create more job opportunities. Rajiv, it's been fascinating speaking to you here at the Hub Culture Pavilion in Davos, and I'm Edie Lush. Thank you.